Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another. And so, there and he cut out. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. I mean, it might have been a one time thing. All those damn it's came out very clear. Fuck it. I'm just, I'm not going to uh, stream. I'm, I'm relying on Steve to have this all recorded. <laughs> we'll start again. <laughs> 5, 4, 3, 2. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Take two of this uh, week's episode of Jupiter's Croc here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel. My name is Matthew, having major technical difficulties once again with technology, because fuck technology. Joining me today again is Steve, also known as Plotticus. Hello, hello. And uh, the man who never... I mean, uh, Ronan, you're the new Rachel. You, you never show up. You're always late. We're recording this multiple days late because of you. Uh, explain yourself. Uh, no, I explained myself in the chat when it happened. So, uh, lick, lick, lick my balls! Woo! You're also, CM Punk! CM Punk! <laughs> oh, God. God. Um, this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are on episode three of Spartacus War of the Damned. This episode is titled uh, Men of Honor. So, um, let's just get into it. A more accurate Spartacus. title for this episode would have been, uh, you know, take take a page from like, you know, Always Sunny. It would have been Spartacus and the gang become villains for a few episodes. Yeah, you know, that that would have been a much more accurate name for this episode. Yeah, I can see that. Plotticus, lead us through the labyrinth that is Men of Honor. I'm gonna try. It's getting harder and harder to summarize these. One, because the episodes are getting more more packed and more dense. And also because I can never watch them and then immediately record because someone is yeah. always two days late to the party. Because someone Rewatch can't it. ever show up when he when he Re says he's going to show up. Rewatch it. Rewatch it. <sighs> Anyways, like, we have we have things that we have to do in our lives, Ronan. So like, so do I. <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, these are the exact same things that that, that sometimes postpone episodes. Son of a bitch. Yeah, you yeah, mean, you mean logic. frequently logic. postpone logic. episodes. Uh, anyway, uh, this movie or movie, uh, this episode starts out with uh, Gannicus and Adius hanging out, and uh, Adius continues to pump out swords for the rebels. And Spartacus comes in, and Adius, like never one to miss an opportunity for more money, is like, hey, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I can always, you know, make more swords. I can always work a little faster if you give me a little bit more money. And Spartacus basically tells them, you know, uh, stick to the deal and you're going to, you're going to get paid what I've agreed to pay you. And if you decide to stick around rather than leave, which is your current plan, maybe we'll talk about more money coming your way. Uh, whatever, you know, Ad Adius is not happy. He wanted more money, but he's, he's going to stick to the deal. He goes to deliver swords to, uh... To Crixus, who is uh, is becoming like uh, kind of the the unofficial doctore of of the rebels here, and uh, no one likes Adius except for Spartacus and Gannicus. Like no one trusts him because he is a Roman, and no amount of Gannicus saying he's a Roman in name only will fix this. Uh, and so, uh, especially Navia, Navia wants to murder this man. And, and it's a pretty uh, hateful boner. It's yes, a pretty hateful boner. Uh, so everyone like ha everyone hates Adius, even though he is the only reason that that the rebels like have weaponry right now. Uh, and was able to get into the city in the first place. Yes, yes, Adius like. Uh, the rebels owe Adius a lot. Now he is being paid, but still, like he, he's come through for them multiple times at this point. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Nimites, who is quickly becoming like this insufferable douchebag within the show, uh, he is like basically like walking around with a piece of bread in front of these starving Roman slaves, or not slaves, but uh, prisoners, and saying. Um, uh, uh, basically, like, you know, tell me where you hid all of your money in your house, and I will give you the bread. And uh, one guy named, like, Ulpianus, who we saw him back in episode one or two, he is the this kind of, like, just generic Roman baker who was chatting up Yellow Ranger in a previous episode. But he says, all right, uh, here, you know, go go to my house. Uh, like, in a, there's a hollow table leg with money in it. Now, please give me the bread. And, and Nimitz is like, Eh, whatever, and just drops the bread on the ground, and then another Roman like dives for it, and so these two Romans, uh, nameless guy and Ulpianus, have to fight for it. And Crixus never wanted to miss an opportunity. He's like, "How about we have a little fun?" <laughs> and so yeah. he gives them swords and makes these untrained Romans 
uh, fight like an actual battle to the death over this bread, and Ulpianus wins. Uh, Crixus drops a the very, bread. A very subspecies subspecies level sword fight there. It is yes. also important to note that he doesn't necessarily want this bread for himself. He wants this bread for his pregnant wife. And everyone knows that she's very pregnant, and none of our good guys give a flying fuck. Well, they're Roman. She's Roman. Don't fuck them. Yeah. Uh... They don't care about the slaves but when they're pregnant. They don't care. Like, yeah, they don't care. Like, we, we, we'll get to this later on. Spartacus is the only one who seems to realize, like, you know, what they're doing. They are becoming Roman themselves but in, in their actions. But you can continue. Continue. Like, I mean, the wife isn't hot like Yellow Ranger, so no one cares in the show. Uh... <laughs> you know, you know, that, you know, your criticism taken back. That that makes up for all of it. That, that is the that is the one. explanation. Uh, that 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 is what's going on here. Uh, yeah, Matt, Matt saw it in the commentary, didn't you, Matt? Uh huh. Anyways, Ulpianus uh, <laughs> has won, and Crixus drops the bird on the ground, and Ulpianus is like, "Fuck you, Crixus! You fucking suck! I'm gonna fucking kill you!" But then he reaches out, and there is both like the bread and a sword within like the same distance of one another, and. No one knows what he's going for, uh, but Navia sees him possibly reaching for a sword and chops his hand. Doesn't chop it off, but she, she like splits it she off. She makes it he, all floppy. Yeah, she, he's he's got like two half hands at the end of his wrist now, uh, and so he's hurt. And like Adius like loses the shit. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? This guy he bakes bread. He has never hurt a man in his life. He, like, I don't know that he owns slaves, but he's, like, never harmed a slave. He's never, like, raised his voice. He is not your enemy. And Navy is like, you know, that, fuck it, he's a Roman, and he was going for the sword. And there's this big disagreement to, uh, among the people that think he was going for the sword and the people that think he was going for the bread. Uh, Navy well, just kind Crixus of... even Crixus kind of realizes she, she went too far because yeah. after they've gone away from, like, you know, the crowd, uh, Crixus is like, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> like it. even yeah. he knows that she's kind of damaged good at, goods at this point. Yeah, so she so Crixus follows Navia as Navia's walking away and Crixus is like, Are you sure he was going for the sword and not the bread? And Navia says it doesn't matter. Uh and yeah. she 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 gives a little uh backstory because the uh, Romans. <laughs> yeah, Cri Crixus says like this <laughs> this man like yeah, this man looks like he couldn't harm a fly. I don't remember what he says, but it's like, yo, th this man was not a threat, is basically what Crixus is saying. And Navia relates a story of when, uh, at the end of, uh, in between seasons one and two, when Badiatus was basically, like, passing her around to be used by, by influential Romans, uh, uh, Navia was sent to a man who did not look like he was a threat. And this man was this, this kind, gentle family man, uh, loved his wife, loved his kids, and then when wife and kids went to sleep, he would take Navia out into a room where he fixed horse carriages and torture her. And then the next day, he immediately went back to being this kind, innocent family man. And because of that, Navia doesn't trust any Romans, especially not the ones that don't appear to be any sort of threat. And so Crixus is still, like, you know, he's not thrilled that, uh, that Navia did this, but at this point, you know, uh, he 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 understands. He does lean more towards the fuck the Roman side of it, but if we can use an analogy, Crixus is more like the predator. He, if he's going to kill something, it needs to be something worthy of killing. Whereas Fair Navia, fight, at this, right? He's it, got that gladiator background. Yeah, yeah. He, if he, yeah, it, I mean, you know, had had this random guy came at him with a knife, he would have, you know, he would have gutted him like a pig. But at the same time, you know, it's like it's like it's, the guy's not. It's a, a, a Mass Effect. If I'll take a thing that Krogan said in Mass Effect, their big insult to people was, you're not worth killing. And that's Crixus's kind of mindset. These people aren't fucking worth killing. Yeah, and I think we really get sort of like the the very beginnings here of, you know, because when we talk about episode four, next episode, Decimation, we're really going to see a break here between uh, our, our, our heroes. But it's really Navia who's who's position yeah, is just kind of like mention that next episode it, it's kind of <laughs> like fuck these romans you know look what they did to me we're I mean, she's getting sick and tired of like treating these romans 
nicely, uh, quote unquote, nicely as Spartacus is pretty much doing here. And I think she's kind of worm tonguing, not in a, uh, you know, in a malicious way, but she's kind of worm tonguing Crixus to be like, look, man, uh, you got to listen to your woman here and, and not Spartacus <laughs> in a way. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, I, the, the, yeah, this, this is next episode, but yeah, I was ab- that was absolutely like, especially towards the end of next episode. We'll, we'll get to it when we talk about next episode, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, that, that was absolutely my thought. All right. So after after the uh, the the unfortunate incident with Alpianus Baker of Breads, uh, Spartacus thinks you know what we should probably check on our whole food situation, and so he <laughs> he goes to to check on the grain. And even though uh, even though Yellow Ranger's husband was not able to set the grain on fire. There's so much of it that is just soaked in oil now, it's un- it's unusable. And so Spartacus took this city thinking that he was going to have enough money, or enough money, enough food to essentially, like, feed his people for the entire winter. And it turns out he's only got about two weeks of food left. Uh, luckily for him, though, in comes some pirates. And it's uh, Heraclio, I think is this guy's Yar. name. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And Heraclio tells Spartacus that, uh, you know, the, the Edile, Yellow Ranger's husband, he and I had a deal. And I, I, I wasn't fully following what the deal was, but I think the explanation is uh, the Edile was a businessman on top of being, you know, this the, the I guess the Roman equivalent of, like, the mayor of this city. And he would pay Heraclio to to attack ships belonging to his competitors and then Heraclio would steal their goods and then the Edile would give him a a new shipping manifest to make it look like the goods were Heraclio's all along uh, but the only thing that made that um, the only thing that made that new shipping manifest legitimate was this like this seal like a, a stamp essentially and so heraclio wants the stamp because he can't continue to uh uh to to efficiently uh pirate and loot without the stamp and so he and spartacus uh make kind of a tenuous agreement and they essentially say you know um you you pirate person who i can definitely trust you continue to <laughs> to feed us and supply us with grain, and in return, we will not only pay you for the supplies, but when we abandon the city, we will give you the stamps. You can create your own bogus shipping manifest. And so they they agree to these terms, and uh, but the the problem now is Spartacus doesn't actually know where this uh, this seal is, and so he goes and asks uh, Yellow Ranger. And tells him, "Hey, uh, I'm looking for this seal." And Yellow Ranger is like, "What? What are you talking about? My husband was a good man. He would he would never work with pirates." <laughs> and Spartacus is like, "Actually," <laughs> and so so Ye- Yellow Ranger is distraught. Like, not only has Spartacus killed her husband, but now he is also his memory. Yeah, he's he, she's also <laughs> taken away all of the good memories and and, and just fondness and love that she had for us so she is completely broken at this point uh but she does ultimately agree to help spartacus and uh in return for that spartacus is going to like not free her but let her like resume a life of some sort within the city and she is now in charge of making sure that uh that all of the captured romans are are actually like properly fed and taken care of uh so uh, you know, it's it's later on the night. Heraclio has come back to ask about the status of the the seal, and Spartacus says we got it. So uh, they they strike a deal. Uh, the the pirates will like at, at like basically just before dawn, the pirates will give this will give uh, Spartacus all of the food that they have, uh, and that this will be the the beginning of a profitable relationship. For, for both of them uh so they they're planning to to meet and do the exchange later on the night like they want like uh, at first heraclio says uh like i want eighteen thousand denarii and spartacus says that's too much and heraclio says okay ten thousand and i take the edile's wife and spartacus is like no we do not deal in slaves perhaps you missed that memo and finally heraclio <laughs> says fine 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 12,000 denarii and Spartacus agrees to these terms so they're going to meet uh just before dawn to to 
to make that trade. Uh, meanwhile, the Romans finally like enter the seat, like the the soldiers finally enter the scene, and it's Weaselface and Caesar. Uh, they go and find the the Roman encampment that's closest to Spartacus's last known location, and uh, basically, like Weaselface has no respect here. Uh, People are treating Weasel Face like crap and, uh, you know, praising Caesar for how amazing Caesar is. And, uh, Julius in... fucking Caesar. Julius fucking Caesar. Ah, this is dumb, but I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I lost my place here. Uh, so wh while, this... yeah. So, so, uh, while, uh, Weasel Face and Julius fucking Caesar are having this pissing contest, uh, in comes a, a person, like a, not a soldier, but a guard that escaped from the city that Spartacus had taken over. And he, he tells the guard, uh, or the guard tells her when Spartacus took the city, like, we, we gotta go get him. Like, fine, I, I, I went in search of fighting men to, to come and help me, you know, stop Spartacus. But Caesar's like, nah, you fucking coward. You ran to save your own life. And see, and Caesar, Julius fucking Caesar just fucking kills him. Like, now, I don't know. Splits his head down so, the yeah. middle Love to the brain. I don't know what the fuck Caesar wanted to happen because, yes, this guy ran for his life, but he ran for his life bringing valuable information to the Roman forces. Like, Caesar and, and Weaselface had no idea that Spartacus had taken the city. Like, if this guy had actually stayed and fight like Julius Caesar said that he should have, Spartacus would have just been further encamped in this city, uh, striking a deal with pirates, and he just could have like amassed, you know, grain and wealth and whatnot. So I don't, I don't really know what Caesar wanted to happen here, but he didn't like it, and so he kills. He's the guard. throwing his dick on the table right there, Steve. To, uh, yes. to make make Weasel Face realize uh, like who's actually in charge here. Well, All right. you also it's like Steve, you like Steve's logic is correct because like yeah, it had this guy not run, they wouldn't know what what was going on. But this is also foreshadowing. Uh, like yeah, you don't turn and t you don't turn tail yeah. and run. Yeah, uh, this is foreshadowing things that are about to happen later on. Yeah, so like so Steve's logic is correct. But it also this does serve a story purpose later. Well, uh, the question of who is in charge right now officially it's Weaselface, and Weaselface yep. tells Caesar, "Get the fuck out, go report to my dad." And Caesar doesn't want to go, but eventually he's like, "You know what? Like you can just tell that Caesar knows that this kid's gonna fuck up." Uh, and, and, and <laughs> he's so just waiting for it. Caesar's like, "Fine, I, I fall to command. I will go, and uh, I will go and report to your father, and." Uh, so Weasel Face tells the the other Roman general that that was praising Caesar's like get your forces ready we attack Spartacus, and so it's the it's like the later that night, and Spartacus and is Weasel walk... Face has specifically been told not yes, to, to attack yes. until Crassus shows up. Yes, uh, so that that he's reminded of that uh, by his friend whose name I still don't know. But the at the end of the last, we'll just episode... call him Clubface. Is that, are we okay with that Clubface to call? I, don't know what I, I think Clubface that's, means that's a spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> it's it's, o it's only a spoiler if you tell people it's a spoiler, Matt. Otherwise, it's funny. <laughs> his face looks like a club. That's what, yeah, that's what it, we're it, it looks right. very clubbable. So uh, at the end of the last episode, where there was the big like question of who was going to be Crassus' second in command and you know Caesar thought it was going to be him and Weaselface thought it was going to be him uh, yeah, obviously he picked Weaselface but he told Weasel Weaselface specifically like your first job is to go and find Spartacus not fight him not engage him in any way find him F-I-N-D find that is all I want you tell to do me. and then tell me <laughs> Uh, so it's it's later that night. Spartacus has left the city walls to go down to the the port where pirates are waiting, and uh, they get there and they deliver the money. And Heraclio and then Spartacus is like, okay, you know, where's where's the goods? Because they, they the pirates just have like two small, a couple of like small cases of stuff. And Heraclio is like, ah, I just I wanted you to have a sample, and if you agree that the sample is good, then I will have the ship pull into the port and give you all of the goods. And Spartacus is like, "Nah, that's that, that's not that's not what we agreed to. The agreement Can't trust was a pirate. the agreement was 
money for food, not money for a sample, and then you deliver the food later. And so the pirates and Spartacus are about to fight each other, uh, but uh, in comes Weasel Face, and Weasel Face is like... 10 to 15 Romans that he brought with him. Uh, and before this, a uh, club face again tells him like your father specifically said, don't do this. Yeah. And we, and weasel face says, uh, I know my father, my father doesn't want an obedient dog. He wants a wolf. that'll take charge. Grr, I'm a wolf. And he's, gonna, he's, he's clearly gonna... feeling small dick syndrome next to, uh, next to Caesar. Cause like Caesar has been compared to a wolf. And so he's like, he's clearly got the small dick syndrome right now. I'm not familiar with that. Never had to worry about that. Uh, so, so Weasel Face and his forces go and attack both Spartacus and the pirates. And uh, the, the pirates and Spartacus have to join forces to fight off the Romans, which they eventually do, uh, which kind of like reinforces to Spartacus that, okay, the pirates are, are, are on our side. And so the Roman forces have been driven back Spartacus well, and the pirates shoot have like, won. They shoot like flaming balls at yeah. them and burn the, up the yeah, yeah, burning, uh, burning during, tar stuff. During yeah. this fight, uh, Heraclio like lights a torch and throws it into the air, and that is a signal to the ships to attack. And so the ships shoot these like balls of fire into the Roman forces, which kills most of them. But then the remaining Roman forces. Uh, start retreating and and weasel face who has been injured at this point is like stand your ground no we are not retreating we are fighting but the, his forces are not listening to him they are running away and club face has no choice but to grab weasel face and, and go because they they're going to lose this fight they are all going to die and so the roman forces have been pushed back uh spartacus and the pirates have been united they are together the deal is in place uh, meanwhile, back in the city, Nimites shows up. Navia has been put in charge of the gate. Like she was told, do not open the gate until Spartacus returns. <laughs> nobody so, listens in this episode. That's, no. that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Nobody listens to anybody in this episode. So Navia has been put in charge of the gate and told not to open it. Uh, so there's people that want to go out and help Spartacus, and Navia's like, nope, I, I have my orders. But Nimites shows up and says, uh, there are some Romans missing. Uh, like a week, there were yeah, a group of them have been like, they're they're just gone. We don't know where they are. And so Navy is like, uh, they must be plotting an attack or something. These 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 innocent Roman bakers are going to to take yeah, the city back from these us. These docile, completely just you know Joe Everyman person. They they are plotting yeah. a horrible plan on us. Clearly. And so Na Navy is like. Uh, Adius, he's Roman. I bet he has something to do with this. And so she goes and challenges Adius, and Adius is like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, uh, Navy is like, uh, you know, he she shows up and he's like collecting his money, getting ready to leave, which was always the plan for him. And she says, Well, I bet you're you're planning on trying to free these Romans and help them escape on your way out. And he's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But they end up fighting, and she gets the upper hand and beats him to death with a hammer. And so when Spartacus returns, uh, saying, yeah, hey, you know, good job, everyone. We were working with the pirates. Uh, then someone tells Spartacus that, uh, you know, the Romans have left. And then uh, Nebius shows up and says, uh, don't don't worry. I, I figured it out. Adius did it. And I killed him. So he it, it's fine. The Romans are in the sea he somewhere. Came at me. We'll fight. He, yes. has, he, he came at me. She is, she's lying. Yeah, she lies about the entire confrontation. Because, like, I think she realizes in the, in the heat of battle, like, oh, I probably shouldn't have killed this guy. I done goof. Uh, fuck it. And just makes up a story. Yeah, so Navia comes back to the group and says, Adius, I went to, I confronted Adius because he freed these Romans. We ended up fighting and I killed him. And Gannicus is not happy because Gannicus has vouched for Adius over and over and over again. Gannicus knows that Adius gives no fucks about the Romans. Uh, but at this point, he has he has no real way to challenge what Navia has said. And so he, he lets it go. He's not happy about minutes. it. He, he lets it go, and so the, the Spartacus has won the day. They're, they are minus one blacksmith, but plus one group of pirates and food. Uh, and then the end of the episode is Yellow Ranger going to the horse stable where she is now staying. And there's a cellar that none of the gladiators know about, and she has been hiding the Romans in there and feeding them. And so Adius died an innocent man. The end.
I just want to point out, we're playing poker here, and I got this cheeseburger next to me. I look on the other side of the table, and everyone's got a fucking gun. So the other side of the t table is very frightening. Right America! Um, fuck yeah! Fuck yeah. <laughs> Alright, Ronan, what did you think of this episode? The, like uh, I mentioned, uh, it, I, I mentioned at the beginning of this, like you know, the, the, like uh, Spartacus and the gang become villains. Uh, like taking over the city completely and utterly, uh, like brings out the worst in all of them. Well, mostly all of them. Like Spartacus has these high ideals. We're not going to become our enemy. I mean, yeah, we had to butcher the Romans to get in here, but we're not going to kill all of them. And we also, we know from having watched the beginning, you know, we, we have it, we have prior knowledge as the audience that like the Romans that are currently alive, at least the ones that they're focusing on, these weren't like, you know, th like the Romans we've been rooting for to be killed have been like Badiatis or Glaber, you know, people who we have seen do horrible things and we, or the elite class and like Capua. The, we have been actively rooting for their destruction because we've seen them do terrible things. <laughs> Uh, the Romans in the city currently, they go. The, the show went out of its way when it was focusing on them to tell you that, like, yeah, these aren't bad guys. These, is, this is just Joe. Every they, they're citizens of Rome, but they, like, they don't, you know, they aren't rich people. They just live here. Yeah, you know, it's like so, like, like uh, to, just more to kind of specifically, you know, give you the moral conundrum of like, okay, well, our like, yeah, we understand why they're killing Roman soldiers and, like, you know, the senators and stuff, but these people don't deserve what they're getting. Uh, they don't deserve what will come to them. Like, uh, like it's, they, like, yeah, they, they, they don't have this coming. Uh, so, we, like, we mentioned that, like, Navy has clearly damaged goods at this point. I think Crixus can smell it, but he doesn't know what to do. Uh, that, yeah. I believe, becomes very clear in, uh, in a few more episodes that he's very well aware of this and just, he's just, I mean this lovingly. He's too dumb to figure to to know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do either <laughs> if it were me. But uh, so there there's another historical inaccuracy in this episode. But we'll we'll get to it in a couple more episodes. It continues on from the first episode. Uh, the like Spartacus did deal with pirates historically speaking, and uh, the like spoiler the pirates did fuck him over in the long run. And uh, yeah, just like and historically speaking, the first time that uh like a uh, I just forgot, like I just forgot the guy's name. <laughs> oh, Crassus. The first time Crassus's forces, like he hadn't gotten to the main force yet, but he had given them strict orders not to engage Spartacus. And historically, yeah, they engaged Spartacus, and historically they lost, and then they turned tail and fled, which uh, did not end very well for them. So yeah, that, Matt is they, a they're... pirate. Can't trust him. <laughs> Clearly. What I. What I uh, like about this episode is I, I like the introduction of the pirates and also, just speaking historically, uh, Julius fucking Caesar had actually gotten captured by pirates. Uh, it's a really interesting story when in his youth he got captured by pirates, they took him away, and uh, he was like, do you know who the, who the fuck I am? <laughs> I'm Julius fucking Caesar. And the pirates, literally who got him... They're they're like, look, we're gonna ransom you, right? We're gonna we're gonna make your family pay us a shitload of money. So they they made this this uh, this offer to Caesar's family, and Julius Caesar, while captured on the boat with the pirates, started laughing at them. It was like, you fucking need that's that's I'm worth way more than that. <laughs> like it's an it's like it's an insult to Julius fucking Caesar that you would only ask for this amount of money. So eventually, the pirates got the money that Caesar demanded, and when the pirates basically set him free Julius fucking Caesar turned around and was like thanks guys by the way I'm gonna come crucify every last one of you motherfuckers and he did he rose and uh, raised an army and went and basically massacred all of the pirates that had captured him and took his money and crucified every single one of them that's the kind of man we're dealing with here. And I, I love the fact that, like, the pirates come into play. I'm just like, oh, man. This is... Wait, if you know, like, the history and stuff of some of these characters, it call just makes, this. like... Yes. Do it. Yeah, do, do, do it. it. Do it. <laughs> Pause, folks. We're, oh, we're, I didn't, we're, we're oh, I didn't realize, like, calling it was that No, it's much. fine. It, it's it's oh, fine. Okay. Boo. Oh, he's got... To, Boo. Oh. Boo. Oh. Oh. Right, give me, give me mean, aces. Too, I need is aces. Isn't a terrible hand? I need aces. Uh, he's got pair of queens. None of those are aces. Uh, you guys led me astray in calling this. Uh-oh. Oh, well, you get a five. You can get a straight. You did not get that. You did not. Son you of a bitch. So. Anyways, Matt, continue with your pirate story. <laughs> yeah, so, so I love the fact that the pirates come in and the pirates, you know, you... 
they said, well, well, can you trust him? Can you not trust him? Uh, but really, this episode is is setting the stage for the next episode uh, because if I watched both of these back to back, and it was just. I mean, this was like one complete story for me, how it starts here and how the next episode ends. Um, and yeah, I, I thought this episode was uh, was awesome. Uh, Steve, what are your thoughts on, on this one? Yeah, I, I enjoyed it uh, a lot as well. There's a couple of minor plot points that I'll mention now that uh, aren't super relevant at this point, but they'll come up later. Uh, one of the pirates named Castus has the hots for Nasir, and that pisses off Agron. Agron goes full jealous bitch uh, several times in the next few episodes. Uh, Gannicus, like so, there's the like this this girl the named girl. Sybil, yeah. who the Gannicus freed, and uh, Gannicus is, or Saxa like finds Sybil and is like, you know what, you you want to you want to repay Gannicus, fine, come with me. And so Saxa goes and gets Gannicus and is like, come come back home, we're gonna have a threesome with this eleven year old. And Gannicus, <laughs> Gannicus, to his credit, like, sees, <laughs> we're not making money out of this. Gannicus, to his credit, uh, sees Sybil and is like, no, nah, no, nah, you need to leave. Uh, and Gannicus even refers to her as a child to Saxa and yeah. tells Saxa, like, I need a, I need a woman for my needs. So, so he, he refuses Sybil, who looks like she's 11 years old. Um, you could only give him credit for so long, though. Giving, yeah, this is true. Uh, eventually, he he gives in. Uh, but as of now, he turns down Sybil. The only this is uh, the only other thing as that I want to mention. The style of the time. And, and this is this is something that I I mentioned last week, and this is something this is something that has stuck with me since I first watched this series from start to finish. Uh, in episode two, Spartacus double crosses the Edile. It is, and it Matt made mention of it that even in the the director's commentary, like they felt like they we have to put Spartacus in a position where he has to basically like be the bad guy. He has to go back on his word in or, for you know the greater good. And so he double crosses the Edile. This episode then establishes that like the Edile was actually a bad guy because he was working with the pirates. And I never mm -hmm. liked that. That felt like a deliberate choice to me. Like, yes, Spartacus did something bad. But he did it to what we will reveal to be a bad guy. It's like they were trying to walk that back a little bit. Like they they didn't they didn't like that they made Spartacus a little bit untrustworthy, and so their fix to that was to just say, "Oh well, he screwed over a bad guy, so it's fine." I, I never liked that. Yeah, yeah, that's I I when you mention it like that, that yeah, you know, the first thought that actually comes to my mind is like later episodes of Dexter. Uh, where, when Dexter eventually starts to like, you know, kill people who don't deserve it, and there's just no repercussions for him. He does, he just starts doing really stupid shit. But you know, because the story has to, because like, you know, the story needs to happen. There's always the revelation, like, oh, it turns out, like, you know, this innocent guy was like a violent drug dealer. So it turns out he was justified. It's that same. It's late. It's lazy writing. It's like what that shit is, like, and it's 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 such a minor thing. Okay, well he had to he had to stab the e dial in the back in order to save the food. You can justify that in your mind. That's and a the minor. The food wasn't even really saved. Yeah, That's the yeah. other thing too. Yeah, it's like in your mind you can justify that, especially considering how on the greater totem pole of what's happening to these people, Spartacus is on the. It, like it, it, in a gradient scale of people doing fucked up things to these Romans, Spartacus is on the very lower end of it compared to like you know Gannic, uh, not Gannicus, uh, Crixus, and most of the rest of Spartacus's army, which are in the much more higher end of fucked up what they're doing. So like, I I I won't see. That was really stupid for them to add in this plot point. They wanted to put pirates in here. And like, okay, well, what was it? They need a seal. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turns, and yet they could have had. They could. You could have done this because, like, the reason why he gave them the seal was like, okay, you leave my business fleet alone. I'll tell you where the my competition's ships are, and I'll give you this seal. So like, you, you could have just made it out like, okay, well, you know, he made a deal with them to protect like the people of the city. You you could have written this in such a way to where the husband wasn't retroactively made a villain. Trails. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree 100%. You're not wrong in what you say, sir. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you guys have anything else you want to mention about this nope. episode, or should we wrap it up? Great episode. Gets better next time. Gets even okay, better yep. next time. Yep, so next week we are going to be talking about episode four, which... 
I would argue is one of the best episodes of, it's, of Spartacus. It's in a my turning mind. point for the series. Oh, for sure, for sure. So this is uh, episode four, Decimation, next week, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, you know, check back next Thursday to hear our thoughts about uh, what a good old Marcus Crassus is up to and what a, what Julius Caesar is up to. And, and yeah, uh, Crassus wasn't really in this episode, so at this point you got to be like, well, where, where, what he, what's he, what's he doing? When's he coming yeah, back? To yeah, yeah. I mean, lots of stuff's happened. I mean, uh, I mean, Weasel well, Face Crassus? cannot carry the load of bad guy <laughs> on his shoulders. Yeah, I mean, we got all these great characters. What, what can Crassus possibly do that would make him look strong? Well, we'll find out next week on Decimation. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Spoiler.